We are going to talk about uh, a few stroked rolls from our rudiments packet. Uh, we're going to talk about five stroke, seven stroke, and nine stroke. Um, however, before we get into that, I want to break down how to isolate your double stroke roll um, before we get into that. So um, the way I teach the double stroke, I call it a push-pull technique. Um, it's literally, I'm, I'm, it's like bouncing a basketball. I'm throwing, I'm throwing the stick into the head and then it rebounds up naturally. I'm not lifting it with my wrist. I'm not pulling it up with my arm. I'm throwing it in with my arm. I let that rebound up. The stick's going to rebound up and then I'm going to pull with my fingers at that point. So again, I have a push and I have a pull. And during that pull, I'm, I'm going to lift the stick back up. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to isolate this. Um, so let's take a look at it from a different angle. Now, let's view it from the push and on the pull, I'm going to lift back up. Here we go. Now, try to do that with both hands. Um, an exercise that we do um, at John Marshall High School, uh, we call it Madison 3. We, break, we isolate right hand, we isolate left hand, and then we piece it together. Um, the way it works is we do eight, eight on a hand here, eight on a hand in the left hand. We set the skeleton by alternating. Then we're gonna, we're gonna diddle the right hand only for a measure. So we'll get the rhythm one E N, two E N, three E N, four E N. Then we go through the process again, eight, eight, alternate. Then we're gonna go right, left, left. So the rhythm would be one and a two and a three and a four and a. And the last time through, eight, eight, set the skeleton, alternate it, and then we diddle the whole way through, stop on one. So here we go, let's listen to that. This is a nice exercise to really isolate right and left hand diddles. If it sounds sloppy at first, it's gonna sound sloppy, just keep working on it and it'll get cleaner. The key is we're trying to make it sound rhythmic. We're not just trying to throw the stick down and let it bounce. So here we go. Now, let's try to apply this to the rudiments. We're gonna start with a five stroke roll. The e you can figure out any of the stroke rolls, pretty much, if you think about doubling those hands. So it's, it's just mathematics here. So if I, if I say I need a five stroke roll, I need to double that right hand first. So that would be one, two. Then I would double the left hand, three, four. I only have one note left, it's a five, it's, and it's a tap. So again, I would have one, two, three, four, tap. One, two, three, four, five. That's a five stroke roll. The same thing's gonna apply with the seven stroke. One, two, three, four, five, six, tap. Okay, you can reverse that and have tap, which would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You can do either way. Same thing with the nine stroke roll. I would have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, tap is nine. So here we go. Let's break down the five stroke. First, let's play the skeleton of the, the five stroke. We'll do four of them. So the skeleton of it, when we broke it down, was right, left, right. So I'm going to put this in context with the 16th notes. So this would be one E and. We'll play four one E ands and then you try to diddle them, and then come back to the skeleton. You can just keep looping this. For right now, I'm gonna do the skeleton four times and the diddle four times. Here we go. Again, you can do four skeletons and four diddles. You could do eight skeletons and eight diddles. 
It's whatever helps you practice and makes it more enjoyable. Um, sometimes I'll do a, like, a, like a ping pong type of thing where I'll go like 8-8, eight, 6-6, eight, six, six, four, four, two, two, and like maybe a 1-1. A one, one. So what, again, whatever you feel works for you, try it out. Now, the sevens. For right now, I feel like it's a little easier learning the sevens starting with a tap. And as we said before, I would have a tap, that'd be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So if we put that in a skeleton standpoint, I would have an accent on one. So I have one, E, and a. Uh. Again, we're putting a 16th note pulse. So if I'm playing that straight, I would have one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. Each downbeat is gonna be accents, just a tap. So let's apply that. I'm gonna, again, do four skeletons out front, four with the diddle. Here we go. Now let's look at nine stroke. We broke that down earlier with the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, tap was on nine. So the skeleton for that would be one, E, and, a uh, tap. So let's try to play that. We'll do four skeletons, four diddles. Here we go. Again, practice these however you want to practice them. However, I would definitely put the skeleton always out front. How, whether, it, again, if it's four, eight, whatever, um, put the skeleton out front. <clears throat> this is going to allow you to really understand that flow of the roll. I call it like a flow pattern. That's what the skeleton is. It's giving you that arm motion um, and so that you can feel that skeleton before you even try the push-pull technique. So. Try to try that exercise out with skeletons and the diddles and do that with each one. And you can create anything uh, game with it if you want. If you want to do four and four and try to do fives and then go to sevens and then do nines. And if you want to try to do like two skeletons, two rolls, and then go to the sevens, two skeletons, two rolls, and nines. I mean, do the whole ping pong effect, going back and forth with whatever you want. It's just getting this in your hands and really understand that this is maintains pulse um, in your arms during the roll. Um, a lot of the times you'll see, uh, see guys who will have this nice skeleton like this and then they get the rolls and it's just, it's all wrist based. And they're really relying on this, like uh, bouncing it. So you, you get this effect. And you can hear from that, that you lose all quality of sound when we don't have that push in the pull. That pull allows for that second note to be as equal um, in volume or equal sound quality or uh, and equal in articulation. The quality of sound is, is going to be a lot more reinforced when we have that pull versus if we just throw it down and let the second note bounce because I'm throwing from here and my bounce is from here. That second note never has a chance to sound like the first note. So <clears throat> break down that technique. Again, it's not going to sound pretty for a while. This doesn't happen overnight. Really focusing on that push and the pull. Push and pull. And you can break it down what we did in the Madison exercise by doing a push, pull, tap, and just really think about it going one, E, and. The key is not to cheat it and go wrist, wrist. I know you can play wrist, wrist that slow. Um, but the key is when we start speeding those up is that you have control over it and the quality of sound is maintained. And you're going to be able to play a lot faster, play with a better sound, and you're going to be able to play longer if you, if you really match that push-pull technique. So give it a try. Good luck. Um, look at the assignment for the rudiments for this upcoming week. I um, hope everyone's safe right now and is being safe. Um, and hopefully we'll see you soon.